Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I want to talk about something I should have talked about over a year ago, which are responses to very common questions about that CBC News piece about the Genius Bar at the Apple Store. Apple did a piece about, CBC did a piece about a year ago, it's titled Apple Under Fire for Allegations of Controversial Business Practices. The TLDR of this piece is that they took a broken MacBook and they brought that broken MacBook to the Apple store and Apple said it would be 1200 to about 1900 to fix. Then they brought it to me and I said that we would typically charge 75 to 150 for this or if bending the pin back in the cable worked and the customer was okay with that as a long-term solution, we would not charge them. Now, there are many things that came up in response to this. The first were people agitated at CBC for being biased. How dare they be biased against Apple? CBC is a crap outlet, blah, blah, blah. And the second is that pins don't just bend on their own. You bent the pin, you're evil, you're doing that on purpose to make Apple look bad. This is something that I should have responded to about a year ago. Admittedly, I'm very late here. This piece came out October of 2018. This was right after I had post-concussive syndrome from a concussion and also the same week that my building went on fire while business was doubling. So I did screw up and drop the ball as a content creator and admittedly also as a business owner in the last quarter of 2018. But late's better than never. So the first thing I want to dive into was the bias. So it seems like this comment is showing up a lot more right now than it was in the past due to CBC cutting out a section of Home Alone that had Trump in it. And there is also a lot more talk about whether or not CBC is biased or is not biased. Now, to be clear, I don't follow or pretend to understand Canadian politics. I don't I'm not a taxpayer in Canada. I don't run a business in Canada. I don't vote in Canada. I have visited Canada once in my life. The only thing I know about Canada is that really cool AVE videos are produced there. Outside of that, I don't know a thing. I know enough with with local politics to know that Fox sucks Trump's dick and MSNBC is constantly trying to chop off Trump's dick. But when it comes to Canada, I don't know one way or the other which way CBC leans. Are they left? Are they right? Are they center? Are they unbiased? Are they biased? I'm not going to say one way or the other, nor am I going to attempt to try and understand the politics of a nation that I don't really follow or live in. But what I can say when it comes to what's going on with this piece is, in my opinion, it was not biased. Let me explain. From the very beginning, and here's the thing that really got me and aggravated me when people said this was biased, they reached out to me and said, we would like to do a piece on how some, something about how Apple is bad with upgrades. I'm paraphrasing, but it was something about how Apple is bad with upgrades. I found this to be boring and bad, which is for two reasons. The first and foremost is that it's boring. It's just, you know, they're bad with upgrades. That's very vague. That's very generic. Yeah, you can't upgrade the RAM because it's soldered onto the machine. It's 2018. Everybody knows that already. It's, you know, we've had six years to to, to figure that out, eight year or nine years if it was with the MacBook Air. And secondly, it's biased. You've come up with a conclusion, and now you're doing a piece working backwards from the conclusion that you have, which is that Apple is bad with upgrades. That's not only boring, but it's biased. I suggest that they scrap the piece and that they do something different. I want you to do a piece where you do this. Take a MacBook, bring it to the Apple store, record what they tell you about it, then bring the MacBook here and record what I tell you about it. Now, there is a chance for Apple to look really stupid, but there's also a chance for Apple to look really good. What I liked about my idea versus CBC's initial idea is that my idea, not only is it more interesting, but it also actually gives Apple a chance to do the right thing and look good. Because there are times where it takes me two or five hours to try and figure out what's wrong with the board, and I fail, and since it's not liquid damaged, Apple will just swap out the board for three or 400 bucks, which makes me look pretty bad. Again, it's not what happens all the time, but it can happen. You never know what can happen in that case. Whereas with their piece, it's just Apple bad, here's why. It's boring. You know, you started with the conclusion, you're ending with that conclusion, you're doing the video about that conclusion. This would be open-ended. And the thing I told them is that you need to have faith that the story will write itself. Now, technically, I am giving Apple the chance to do the right thing. But I've been in this business for about 11 and a half years now. I know they won't. When it comes to repair, I know they won't. I'm giving them a chance to do the right thing. But I knew there's a damn good chance that they're not going to do that. So they found the machine that was broken for whatever reason. They bring it to the Apple store. The Apple store says 1200 to 1900 Then it comes to the store, and it has this Ben pin on pin 1. And I also went over the fact that they said, well, they said it was liquid damaged. One thing I really wish they had included in the piece was me going over the board for five minutes in a microscope. 
I gave them microscope footage. You could see from here, this is microscope footage, just like what I have out of my camera. So I actually gave them that in a flash drive. There was footage of me going through that board for five minutes, zero corrosion on it, which does, which people keep saying it was liquid damage. Like, no, it wasn't. There's lots of my customers, they do this thing where they, they don't lie to me. They lie to themselves. And then they tell me the truth as they see it, which is that they never got liquid on their computer. They selectively forget about the time that it was really hot outside. So they opened the window while their MacBook was right next to their bed. And then it started raining and the w rain from the window went on their MacBook that morning. And they just really hoped that if they never acknowledged it, that it wouldn't be liquid damaged. Like, people don't lie to me. They lie to themselves, and then they tell me the truth as they see it. I'm aware that people lie when it comes to liquid damage. Uh, that's why that's the first thing I do when people show up. Like, Did you get liquid on it? Are you telling the truth? I'm going to open it up. I'm going to look through this thing in a microscope. I'll find it. But there was no liquid on this machine. So the question that comes up is, well, how does pin bend? Did you bend that yourself and then give it to them to send to the Apple store? No. The reason that pin bent, most likely, this is a guess, is that somebody tried to replace the screen and failed. This model is not very intuitive when it comes to replacing the screen. None of the A1502s and A1398s are in contrast to older or newer models. In older or newer models, it's really obvious how the screen cable plugs in, especially in the newer models. It's just impossible to not route it properly because it's just straightforward. Whereas this cable does a zigzagging thing and there's a DC inboard over there and a small channel. It's, it's confusing. So what most people wind up doing is they have the cable the, the cable goes like this, and then the, the plug is over here. And what they do is they uh, are pulling as hard as they can to try to wrap it around where they think it goes, and then there's a latch, and they try as hard as they can to move it over. Now, the more they pull on the cable, since the cable is plugging into the plug like this, it's going to lift this part up as they pull, which means that the side with the backlight is going to be up a little bit, and then when they try to put that latch over and shove the thing in and pull it as hard as they can they're not they're bending the backlight pin it's a very common do-it-yourself mistake and people are placing the screens on their own machines when they break it or it dies is very common because it's expensive to do so at apple it's very difficult to get them to cover their own stain gate warranty and people may just want to replace their own screen i'm i'm used to seeing this i see this maybe once or twice a week at some point so i'm familiar with it it's the first thing that i check for and one of the things that I was also criticizing Apple for is that you don't even know to check for this. I mean, I have a small repair shop. I know I see way less machines than almost any Genius Bar does. How is it that I know to check for this and you don't? But also, it's not something that I did. It's most likely something that a user did. The pin probably did not bend itself inside the machine, but it's something that a user did. It's not some sort of evil thing that we did to make Apple look bad. And frankly, if I was going to do something to make Apple look bad, I'm... I'm probably sending 20 volts to some random chip that you're never going to see. I'm not doing something that's this obvious. Although now I know that even if it is this obvious, the Apple Store is not going to get it. But that's the way that that pin is going to bend. Now, eventually, CBC did tell me where they got the machine from. And I got, I got a laugh out of it because I know that the place they got it from is not exactly the best at putting this stuff together. Uh, I'm not saying the name because it would just be... I don't know, but just be, like, it would be kind of mean to, to gloat at that level. But like, yeah, they, they, they sucked at putting the thing back together. They did what many of my customers do. And they, you know, I told them, get a machine from a recycler or someplace that sells junk uh, and bring it to, uh, that's broken, bring it to Apple, see what they say, and then bring it to me. Because I thought that would be more organic. I don't want to break the machine myself in some non-standard way. Find a machine online that's broken or something. But yeah, this this was interesting because if they had actually done this, they would have had a working machine. I, I imagine now the machine's back in the possession of, of CBC News. So that pin does not bend on its own. It bends when people try to replace their screen. In terms of liquid damage, the machine had no liquid damage. It had red stickers, but no corrosion. And in terms of bias, they did, con again, I am used to bloggers masquerading as journalists reaching out to me on a regular basis. These people were not bloggers. They were real journalists. They just so happened to have a little bit of a, hey, let, let, let's do this type of story with its pre preconceived conclusion, but that's not what they wound up going for. If you look it up, Terrence McKenna is an excellent journalist. He's got way more balls than I do for a lot of the pieces that he's done. I probably would have probably damn near pooped myself uh, talking to some of the people that he's talked to or going to the places that he's gone. And he and, <coughs> and his partner 
had the wherewithal, the integrity, and the, I, su- I suppose, the, the faith to just trust that doing the piece in this more honest way would work. I'm glad they did, because I do speak to lots of bloggers masquerading as journalists that are not open to doing an open and honest piece where you actually give people a chance to speak and a chance to show what they are. They did that. That, that is old-fashioned journalism. That's Let's bring this machine to the store, see what the hell they say, give them a chance to give their story, then bring it to somebody else, see what they say, give them a chance to see their story. And the thing, and the thing that bothers me above all else is when people say that this is some sort of sensationalized, overhyped piece. There's nothing I could have done. There's nothing I could have done outside of what I did to give Apple the benefit of the doubt. At the end of the day, it is not my fault that the Apple Store's policies are that bad. The fact, the reason that this video makes Apple look bad is because their repair policies suck. They suck. I don't have to do work to make them look bad. It doesn't take work. It really doesn't. It's that easy. And what absolutely kills me is the fact that the the biggest haters of this content, the people who are genuinely up in arms and aggravated that it exists, are the very people who would actually benefit from the policies changing. What am I advocating for? What am I advocating for? Maybe the person who you pay a damn good enough salary to and have half a brain who looks at the machine should know to be aware to look for these things before quoting $1,200 to $1,900. Have some knowledge. Quote more options. Is that going to hurt you? If you're, an, if you're an Apple product user, even if you hate my guts, you hate the sound of my voice, you hate the kitty that sits behind me, you hate the zits on my face, if I got what I wanted, if I genuinely got what I wanted, what would happen? You would spend less money on repairs when you went to the store. The company would treat their customers better. You would have a better experience. And I would go bankrupt. Even if you don't like me, wouldn't you want the things that I advocate for to occur so that I can go bankrupt and be destitute? I just signed a lease for a $12,500 store. And I'm spending a lot of money on construction and putting the place together and renovating and first, last, deposit, all these moving expenses without a business loan. What do you think is going to happen to me if Apple just announces one day that they're going to treat their customers well? If you don't like me, wouldn't you like to see my business fail? You know the quickest way for my business to fail? For Apple to get their crap together. To A, produce products that don't fail as easy. And B, support them better. If Apple supported their products better, there would be very little need for me as there was in the end of 2018. Admittedly, now we're getting into much higher level lab data recovery of hard drives and SSDs with bad heads, damaged platters, and so on and so forth. So we are on this path to even if Apple repair is completely and utterly untenable and not viable, that we will still be able to be in business. But that wasn't true in, tw- in, uh, in 2018 when this piece came out. So think about it. Would the things that I advocate for coming true really be that terrible? That's what I don't get. Is that I, I would get if the people that hated this stuff were the people who wanted to see Apple users get ripped off. But it just kills me when the people who are so up in arms against this are the very people that would actually benefit from what I advocate for coming into, coming into reality. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Say goodnight, Blackberry. Come on, Barry, show them your pretty face. Good girl. Who's a family-friendly kitty? Show them how family-friendly you are, Blackberry. Aren't you family-friendly? She's very family-friendly. See ya.